today my topic is uh, project planning and management as uh, tara has told that uh, i have a quite a good number of experience in in planning and management of various projects in fact my entire career lies on that only so whatever i have learned i would like to share with you now let us talk first what is project planning uh, the project planning if we talk the success of a project will depend greatly on careful and continuous planning and management of the execution of activities according to plan so what happens is that whenever we get a project first we do the planning on papers means how to execute the project so next come action is the scheduling so there is a subtle difference between project planning and project scheduling like if we talk about the uh, the definition of project scheduling project scheduling is the determination of the timing and sequences of operations in the project and their assembly to give the overall completion time at this stage manager decide how long each activity will take and compute how many people and how much material will be needed at each stage of project so if we talk about the project planning where we just put how the project has to be executed but when we talk about the project scheduling it is actually next stage so here basically the 3m what we call man material and machines so the deployment of that how it has to be done that actually put it so it comes to the more realistic stage of the project as i understand that uh, this course is on uh, on uh, project management i think everybody knows that uh, there are five stage of project management generally first is the initiation then planning third is execution fourth is monitoring and controlling and last is the closing so generally uh, this scheduling comes under the planning stage now uh, let us see what are the things involved in the scheduling first is that breakdown of project definable measurable and identifiable task and activities what it means that when we get a project is that we try to uh, break it up in in different tasks in uh, what are the task the sum total of the task may be the project so a definable measurable and identifiable task we define in the project next is that establish the logical interdependence among them now when we arrive a number of tasks how to those tasks to be accomplished so we we define which task has to be done first then second which can be done concurrently like that all the tasks are been defined so that there is a chronological events can happen next is the estimate activity duration what exactly it means is that for for accomplishing any task time is required so what will be the time estimates that we put for for each and every task then what we do is that with the the interdependency among all the tasks we draw a graphical presentation maybe it if the form of bar chart or maybe a network diagram and lastly we analyze the network it means that we keep on monitoring the network whether if any correction is required things like that at every stage we we keep on you know constantly interact with the total networks so these actually these are the steps the where the schedule is been done then let us talk about the requirement of schedule it is required to calculate the project completion means if we if we know the each and every task if we know what is the time duration then probably we will be able to tell what is the total time required to accomplish the whole project next is to calculate the start and end of specific activity as we talk about that we we'll talk about the task so task is nothing but an activity so the the start time when the specific activity to start and hold when it will be finished that that can be that can be put in that schedule to predict and calculate the cash flow means when there is a big project and 
as I said that the, when we do the scheduling, we put all our all CMs, man, machine, and material, which cost money, right? So any point of time, what is the cash flow? Is cash outflow is happening? So if I talk of a big project, like you know, let us uh, talk about. And I, we have listened to, we have conducted, you know, the smart city of Chandigarh. It is a very big project. It consists of almost 250 crores, and it takes a, almost more than a year for us. It is almost 16 months project for us. Now, what happens when we when we when we conduct the task? So we see that you know how much how much tasks were accomplished, how much money we have spent on the project, and based on that, because there is the payment of from the Chandigarh Smart City was on a milestone basis. So if we accomplish certain milestone, then how much money they will give us? So this thing on a on a big big project, we keep on constantly calculating this, so that we should not go in a negative cash flow situation. To evaluate the effects of change of orders, they are actually we call as a project flip. What happens when we enter into project? We enter into a scope agreement with the customers. They give a, a detailed uh, briefing what has to be done. But as you enter into the project, we find that there are certain things they must have missed. So they are they are we call they when they realize it, the customer realizes it, they they ask us uh, uh, to do those work. So that that will be an additional work to the total project. So that we call as a project trip. So if that that sort of things happens. They are also in the schedule. We will be able to understand it, where we are going to lagging, whether we are how much money we have to invest on that to to meet the project trip, and what is the time duration is required. So the schedule is required to understand those things. Next is that to improve work efficiency. What exactly means is that, like all all uh, activity is a time bound activities. And in a specific time, we need to finish it. Now, any particular day, suppose the project is maybe a one month duration project. So we have to finish it from day, start at day one and finish at day 30th. But it may happen on 15th day, we need to find what, what are the uh, tasks accomplished as on day. So we will try to compare this with the actual scheduling and we'll see that where we are. And if you are lagging, Probably you know, we need to know, you know, improvise ourselves to beat those those lines so that we can we can end up the project at the right time. To resolve delay claims, here it means to say sometimes uh, if it is a milestone basis payment, and as I, I talked about, there is a project keeping is happening. Suppose this milestone supposed to achieve way at the 30th day. But due to project team means some additional work has come from the customer side, and due to that the delay has happened. Maybe instead of 30 days, it must have gone to 30 second day. Certain cases in the contract it clearly mentioned that if in a delay happens, then certain percentage of LD we call as a liquidity damage they will levy on the uh, on the uh, those whoever is uh, doing the project. So just to avoid that, even if project trip if it happens and why it is happen why and due to that if the delay has happened, then probably we can able to resolve. We can talk to the customer, say, telling that look, uh, there is a new work has come which has not been assigned as per the project. This work we have done, it it took us as a two to three days. So due to this delay has happened due to that. So probably it will help us to 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 resolve all the delay claims. And lastly, it starts with a very effective project control tool. At any point of time, dynamically, we can monitor the whole project with respect to that, and we can see what is the project status. Now, we talked about the types of schedules, right? Now, there are uh, three types of schedules we use. One is called gun chart or a bar chart. Second one is part that is program evaluation and review technique. Third is critical part method that is CPM. And we'll speak of one after another how what are those charts 
how we can draw it and what are the advantages and disadvantages of those charts also. Now let us talk about Gurney's chart. Generally it knows as a bar chart. It was originally developed by Henry L. Gurney in 1917. It was first used in World War I. It is used in planning of Hoover Dam and East State Highways. The bar chart is a very popular tool for planning and scheduling of simple projects. For simple projects, it is one of the very effective tools. In a bar chart, the activities are shown on a horizontal bar, on a horizontal time scale, where the start and end location of the bar coincide with the start and finish date of the activity. I will show uh, how it looks like. Like this is what? Here on the horizontal line is the time scale. This time you can define in terms of days, weeks and months based on the duration of the project. And in, in Y axis, we'll put all the activities. Here A is one of the activities shown. And horizontally, the time scale has been shown as six days. As we progress it, it will, will keep on changing the colors that indicate us how much actually the work has been done. In next slide, I have shown it. Like uh, the duration of the task is six days. And suppose it is going as per the requirement. Then on four days, it is supposed to complete 67%. And actually the colored mark, what we have shown it here, it, it, it shows that it shows that 67%. So this way it has been marked. So it will be showing what is actual, actually what it should be, what, what is planned actually and what is the real scenario. So that can be put like this. So all activities like this, are being put one after another, and then, uh, and as the as the work progresses, we keep on marking those activities so that and visually we'll be able to see at any point of time what what is the status of the whole project. Like here, I have shown one example. Like there are uh, the task has been defined: T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, and T9. Right. T1, it takes three days. T2, it takes four days, uh, three and a half days. T3, it takes three days. T4, it is one day. T5, it is one and quarter day. T6, it is uh, one and uh, 1.75 days. T7, it is uh, close to three days. One, two, three, close to four days, sorry. T8, it is... Uh, T and quarter days, T9, it is 1.75 days. So these are the tasks, right? On a time scale from day one, day zero to day, day, day 10, we have put it. And like the task T1 will put as three days, T2. And you can see here the task T4, T5, right? Uh, we have started here. What it indicates is that we can do these two tasks maybe parallelly, once the task T1 and T2, T3 is complete. It indicates that, that, that we call in terms of project parlance, interrelationship. Like this we call as a, uh, as a predecessor task, and this we call as a successor task. The relation between these is been shown. It means that T4 and T5 can start this task if the task T1 and T2, T3 is complete. Similarly, if we look this task T8, right, probably these two tasks T4 and T5, it is complete, then only we can start T8. Like that, right? these are the interrelationship that we put on the chart and along with the, the timelines also, we will put in the bar chart. So it is a very simple chart, it can, in, at a glance, you can understand what is the scenario of the project. Now, here I have drawn a bar chart here, and we would like to see that three days, the scope actually accomplished in three days, right? Now, here in T1, if we take the three days, third day, so according to our schedule, T1 is likely to be complete, but actually it has happened 
similarly t2 is supposed to be maybe uh, close to 90% but it is showing as 80% on t3 it is showing like it is supposed to finish say uh, full but only 33% has happened so like that the marking we used to put it there and we will know what is the status of each and every task so this is a, a, a pictorial depiction anybody can understand that what is exactly happening on the project front now i just uh, put an example of uh, our bar chart uh, let us let me go through it uh, draw the bar chart and estimate the total duration of the following activities as i told that you know, the chart have the few things to be done first is the what is what are the activities we put as this what are the description of that what is the duration and what is the predecessor means means prior to task prior to doing this particular task these tasks need to be finished that we call the predecessor task right now uh, this is because it is nothing but a, a, a construction project where the the activities are site cleaning the total activities has been has been divided into a b c d e f and g now after read out the activity what we have been you know, segregated it like first is the uh, a activity called site cleaning duration is one day and it is a is a very first operation so there is no predecessor then comes activity b which is called a general excavation at which you have to dig it probably it will take two days and it can it can start after a that is on the site clearing is over then only the activity can start b next come c excavation for utility trenches we need to draw we need to you know, dig some utility trenches so that can be happen the duration is two days and that can happen we that is one ex excavation is over then only we can start it then next activity is the uh, placing form work and reinforcement bars i mean before concrete we have to put the form work and reinforcement bars so that activity they will take three days and that can start only the ex excavation is over then only we can start that activity next come activities e installation of sewer lines so probably it will take 3 days and that can happen on the excavation is over then only we can start next come activities f the installation of other utilities probably it will take 3 days and it can do we can do it after excavation is been done then only we can start this work and last is the uh pouring concrete means in that we have to put the concrete so it will take two days time and it can happen once the work d that is placement of form work and reinforcement with bar is over and e is that installation of crn lines is over then only we can do it now with this we would like to draw a bar chart and we have to see that the problem what i put is there today is the end of day 5 and the site engineer reported that activity c is activity c that ex uh, excavation on utility trenches is 80% completed right and activity d that is placing former and reinforcement bars is 33% completed now we will see comment on the progress of the project and who is and how much activities are delayed right now for that doing this what we have to do first we have to do we have to draw the bar chart now if we see the bar chart these are charts are drawn like activities a b c d e f g all the activities have been put in y axis and its time duration like day 1 a day 2 b like that as we say c and d these can happen if i go back to the previous chart c and d can start once the b is completed right so here also in the chart you can see c and d can start once the b is completed like right? 
Then uh, if we see E and F, we go to the previous chart. If we see E and F, that is it can complete once activity C to be completed, then only it can start, right? So we have put there E and F, once the activity C, this is a C, once it is complete, then this can, this can happen. Similarly, activity G, if we look there, once D and E completed, then only activity G, G can start. So we have done activity G here. So once D and E, uh, D and E complete, then only you have started activity G. So all the activities along with that, along with the interrelationship has been put up in bar chart. Now let us see as the problem what is stated that, that at the end of day five, activity C is 80% and activity D is 33%. Uh, to yes, he said he has completed it. Let us see what exactly has happened. Now, if we put there, if we see there in the bar chart, if we look in the chart on day five, right? We are supposed to complete 100%, and activity D we are supposed to complete full, right? But actually, what has happened is that he it is uh, if we see if we go back to the problem e is 80 percent and d is 33 percent so see whether it is happened or not c is 80 percent c in fact c is 100 percent and d is who are supposed to copy it but it is left out with 67%. So this is the status. So this is the way we can monitor the project, what exactly is happening. So let us talk about the advantage and disadvantage of bar chart. Uh, if we talk about the advantage, advantage is useful to report information to people who are concerned about a project but may not be involved in day-to-day -day management, right? It is it is uh, very simple to understand what is exactly happening there. It is a simple format and readily understood at all levels of management. As I said, it is a very simple format and, and anybody can understand what is the status of the project. It can provide a quick visual overview of a project in convenient way to monitor job, progr job, job progresses, schedule equipment, and queue, and record project advancement. Then you can see the total and the progress of the project can be understood by seeing the chart by itself. If we talk about the disadvantages, here interdependence, interdependencies among activities are difficult to show. The bar chart itself does not provide a basis for ascertaining which activities are critical, which are focused. Now, when we talk to the subsequent uh, uh, type of project scheduling, we talk about part and the CPM, where there is two terminology comes that is called is critical path, sorry, another is that focus. So here, the importance of that, I'll explain it there. But in this chart, we will not able to understand what is critical to the schedule and what are the floaters mean, what is the or what is the slack time we are having, we are not able to understand it. Second is that it is not an adequate planning and scheduling tool because it does not show a detailed, integrated and complete plan of operation. So it, it is not a complete plan of operation with that we will not able to understand by seeing only the bar chart. We can't tell what will be the effect of a today, delay today will have a timing of future activity. Like here, uh, when we talk about the project, we talk about the uncertainties, we talk about the probabilities. It means that, suppose a project duration, maybe on a, a, a month of project duration, now when we progress certain extent, and we found that it is not meeting the scheduled time. Now, what is the probability that 
that the entire project will meet the schedule that you can calculate. So there is a way to do the calculation. In bar chart, that, that, that data is not available, so we are not able to talk. But when we talk about bar chart CPM, we will be able to tell it what is the probability of a completion of, of, of the project with, the, with the, what is a specific time frame. So that sort of calculation is not possible in part chart. Now let us talk about network techniques. Uh, and if any, if you have any question, you can stop me anytime. You can ask any question, please. Shall I continue then? Well, next is the network techniques. The critical path method, that is CPN, and program evaluation and review techniques, it is part, are two of the most widely used network techniques. A network is a logical and chronological graphic representation of the activities and events composing a project. So when we talk of a project, as we say that we in, in bar chart, we talk that the project, we, we segregate into activities, we segregate into tasks. When we talk about the, uh, the project in terms of parts or CPM, we talk about the activities and events. So the total project has been segregated in certain events and to do those events, certain activities are required. So that way, the entire project, the entire project has been split up. Next is that the network diagram is essentially a flowchart of a project task. As I said that the, it is a project. In the project, we, we will segregate in, in small, all activities that have been segregated. So they, we will put the activities in the form of activities as well as nodes to make a network diagram. And it's nothing but a flowchart of the total activities which moves from left to right. A project network is a asset of arrows and nodes because the total project network being drawn with the help of arrows and nodes. So it is it is encouraged that total project will find a lot of arrows and nodes into that. Network diagrams are the preferred techniques for showing activity sequencing. So this is the preferred diagram because not many data are there inside. So through that you can understand and in industry per se, everybody uses these network diagrams only. When task starting and ending times are uncertain, the network diagram is often a better technique to use than the bar chart. As I talk about the project, project can be of two types. One is a deterministic project and another is a probabilistic, probabilistic project. What is deterministic project is that if that project is already been done once, okay, so those sort of type, uh, project type we call deterministic. Why it is deterministic? Because as I told that the project will be segregated in different activities. And if we know to do the activities, what is the time required? If the time estimate is available or the same type of work is done earlier, we have to interpolate to get the, the activity timing. So the time frame what we get is a deterministic time. So these sort of project we call it deterministic. Like you know, if we talk about construction of a building, like building can have various sizes, but the basic ingredients to make a building are remain same. Only thing is that probably no no the number rooms are more, number of storage are more, things like that. So if we have a certain idea of a building construction and its the time constituents of all the activities, probably we can extrapolate to create the timing of to make a bigger building also. But if we talk of a project, let us say we have to develop a new product and it is happening for the first time. So there will be a lot of activities need to be done. Since it is being done in the first time, the time estimate we do not know. So we assume a time based on our experience that we call as a probabilistic time. 
So there, that's why the project has been segregated in two forms. One is the deterministic project, and this probabilistic, probabilistic project. So when there is a probabilistic project, so bar set cannot help because the timing we do not know the formula. So we need to you know, estimate the time, and based on that we do we draw the network diagram. So that that those projects we call the probabilistic project, and the time estimate there is a way to calculate the time estimate. That I will discuss it. So these, so for these reasons, the network techniques are very prevalent in the industry, and and uh, industry parts everybody uses these techniques. And lastly, there are two ways that are commonly used to draw a network diagram for a project. That's I talk that one is the CPM method and this part. Now, uh, before uh, going to the networking, there are certain terminology we need to understand, and because this terminology will be used while drawing the network diagram. Okay, so uh, there are the basic relationship between the activities. We call there are four types of relationship exist. The relationship between predecessor and successor activities in four types. First type is the Finish to start, we call it FS. It means that the successor activity can begin only when the current activity completes. That means, like I have, I have given an example, the the formwork installation must be finished before the concrete casting can start, because to do the casting we need to have the formwork. If that is not been done, certainly we cannot start the concrete casting. So the placement of form work is a predecessor, and then after that, the successor activity will be pouring of concrete. So if I talk that the predecessor that is pouring of concrete can start once we finish the place of norms. So that's why it's called finish to start. That is. The next activity can start if the previous activity is being finished. So this is one of the relationship we use in the networking. We call it finish to start. Next is that finish to finish. That means the predecessor and successor activity should finish almost together. That's what we call finish to finish. I have given a small example here, like here. uh let us say we need to do some painting so painting what are the activities involved the first activity we have to have erect of scaffolding right then activities are remove old pan old paint smoothing painting then inspect then dismantling of scaffolding right now this inspection activity is it can only happen when because these remove of old paint smoothing and painting probably we can do parallelly maybe this activity may remove of paint may start earlier then that portion need to be smoothed then painting can start so it can go parallelly right now the inspection can happen when all the three tasks are over so this is example of finish to finish that means if the these three tasks if they are they are finished then only the inspection task can be taken up so that is called finish to finish activity right then one activity we call as start to start like the start of the successor activity depends on the start of the current activities There might be lag between two activities. Okay, that like here we want to put say tiles on the floors. Okay, now first is the we need to clean the surface. These activities first we define. There's the clean the surface, then create grout, then say tile, and last we need to clean the floor area. Now when we clean first we have to clean the surface, then when we spread the grout. Along with that, we can put start set time. Probably there will be lag. That's why we sorry. That's why we have mentioned that lag between two activities may be there. 
probably yeah, it has to start a bit early when the crowd will start putting there then we can start putting the tiles right so that's why the relationship between these two activities we call start to start means once it has started then we can start these activities also right so this is one of the uh, relationship we use in a network diagram and lastly we call start to finish that is the successor activity cannot finish until the current activity starts okay that is the last the success activity we cannot finish it unless the current activity starts it is not a very common practice uh they are typically used to delay the time lag time or lag okay now let us see uh, we have done a work breakdown like this we have to erect a formwork we have to put a steel re reinforcement into that we have to pour concrete then order concrete so these are the activities while doing the concreting of a of a of a structure now if we see these four activity pour concrete right this order of concrete can happen uh, we cannot finish the activities unless uh, we can uh, we can say activity cannot be finished that is the ordering cannot finish unless the current activity starts that means whatever may be the requirement that requirement has to place a order and if we, if we have to get it right so unless we start this activity we probably ordering ordering what is the total requirement we will not able to do it so this is a very rare occasion it happens and uh, uh, so this is one of the act one of the relationship we use we call as start to finish then uh, there are certain uh, classical differentiation during networking one we call activity on arrow other we call activity on node okay now let us see what is activity on arrow activity on node now activity on arrow is it is also called arrow diagramming method adm network diagram or ij method because activities are defined by the form node i and to the to node j here basically it is called also adm because it is called ij method because for every node we will we'll number it like here you have number 1 2 3 4 5 like that and certain cases we number i j k etc that's why it is called ij method also activities are represented by arrows so this is the activity here which has to be done it is represented by arrow like here activity here a the like from from node 1 to node 2 if you want to do it one activity has to be done so that is activity a that has been shown here similarly from node 2 to node 4 you have to do some activities that is activity c that is been mentioned here similarly from one uh, node 1 to node 3 you have to do to a activity which is called activity b it has been shown here from node 3 to node 4 it is activity d it is shown here and to have a correlation there is called dummy activity i'll speak about details about that so these are the activities uh, activity on arrow nodes or circles are the starting and ending points of the activities so these nodes and circles are the starting and ending point of any activity because activity starts from this point this is starting activity ends there so there is one node so at the starting of the activity there will be one node or circle with a presentation and at the end also there will be one node or circle as a representation it can only show series to start dependencies as i talk about earlier the different different dependencies so it is finished to start that means this activity can start if it is finished this activity can start only it can finish so that is the dependency is to shows at finish to start dependency now let us talk about the representation of activity on arrow like as i told that there is a node node is defined either a numeric number or 
or, or I or J, something like that, and which is J is greater than I. This is generally the because to understand things that flowing from left to right. That's why J we put this this no no number or even number we keep it more than this, right? And activity name we put it on that, and activity duration we put it on the in down here. So this is the way the activity on, on arrow is depicted. Okay. Next is the dependencies. So there are I have shown here what is independent activities, what is dependent activities. As in the if we recollect in the bar chart, and then we have seen that activity can start in certain activity. Is over then only the other activity can start. So that is actually called the dependency. Now, if I talk about here, I mentioned as independent activity. So activity is a activity is A, event is two. Then if I do the activity event, we can reach four. Now here it depends. It does not depend upon anything. So we call as a independent activity. Here also, if we see the activity B. From node 10 to node 12, if you want to, if you want to go, you have to do the activities. That is the activities B, which is not dependent of anything. So that is called independent activities. And now, if we see, it is called dependent activities because if we want to start activities B, it depends upon A. Unless A is completed, activities B cannot start. So these we call as a dependent activities. Now there are certain situation in the network diagram that I I just I narrate it there. Like in the first diagram, A must finish. <coughs> Either B or C can start. To start B and C, <coughs> sorry, we need to finish A. Then only B and C can start. Similarly. If we can start A and B, must finish to start C. So C can start <coughs> once A and B both are finished. <coughs> Similarly, C and D it can start when A and B we have to finish it. Both A and B must finish before either C or D can start. So these are certain these uh, diagrams we will be using once we draw the network. Now I in previous slide I talk about dummy activities. So let me explain what is dummy activity. The dummy activity is an activity with zero duration. That is, it does not consume any time. Consume no resource, drawn as a dashed line, and used to adjust network diagram. So it used to draw as a dashed line. When there is a dashed line, that you understand, it's a dummy activity. When we draw a a solid line here, so that we denote as a activity. Used to maintain a unique numbering activities because to maintain a sequence in the network diagram. So we we maintain we put a new uh, unique numbering. Now why you put a dummy here? Not more than one activity should have the same preceding and succeeding event. Only one activity may connect any two events. Now let me explain here. Like here the activity suppose activity here the event is one and event is two. Now, if to go from event one and two, what we have drawn is that we have to perform two activities: activity C and activity D, right? But the rule says only one activity may connect any two events. So there are two events; it has to be connected by only one activity. So if we connect like this, it will, it will not be a correct depiction of the networking. So here actually we use a, a, a dummy like here you can see the activity one right and activity two from one to two you have to do 
we have to do two activities c and d we have put here one is c one is d but here because here it said that it can the the event can join by only one activity so here c and d cannot happen to make a logical structure here we have connected from 1 to 2 by c and 3 to 2 by d and to make a relationship here we just join there it is become one to otherwise there there will be a low logical relationship just to establish that these dummy activities been added right so this is the purpose of dummy activities then activity or no right we talked about there are two types of activities we do one is activity on arrow and activity on no right here if we talk about activity on no it is we can use both type of uh, things so it is a question of preference whether we will use activity on no or activity on arrow right here is activity labeled with identifier using usually a letter oblique code duration in the standard units like this here this is we call the activity here it is a is the activity and here generally number unit like how many days it takes it that that unit we put here that way the activity is been designated next is that there is one start and one end event so this is one start event and there is a one end event and time goes from left to right so when we put it when it, we time it as i'll show you in the subsequent slide when we time it it moves from left to right so activity on arrow or activity on no it is used in both part and cpm chart it is a question of choice any anything can be used so uh, basically when we draw generally we use we choose activity on no now there are certain relationship as we understand as i said here that ss is start to start fs is finish to start fs is finish to finish these relations are been shown here now i'll explain it the activities in the node diagrams are preferable to be drawn in rectangle instead of circle as i told you earlier that generally activity we put a rectangular diagram instead of circle now here when we put an activity do not connect from top or bottom connect only from side only like we only connect from one activity to other activities we do not take the arrows like this way from top or bottom we connect from side like here i have shown it side way now here the relationship as i explained it earlier that the start to start means if i if i want to draw the relationship that means to start this this has to start so relationship diagram i'll draw like this way then if we talk is finish to start this will start once it is finished so this diagram will be like this if it is finish to finish that means here it is a finish is there from there this diagram will go it will go into finish so these are the the, the logical diagram what we will be using in drawing networking in subsequent subsequent phases now uh, activity on node here also certain relationship i wanted to show it there like there are three activities here activity a activity b and activity c suppose b and activity b and activity c depends on activity a so this is the where depiction is not correct is it has to be like this from activity a the arrow one one line will go to activity b and one line go to activity c this is the way it is been depicted then design from left to right in a chronological order we need to put it in a chronological order if we put like b like though it will look to be correct here is a here is b now we have joined like this way first of all it is not from left to right we are joining is right to left it is not correct that's why it is it is not correct in this case we have to put like this both the activities and we have to join like this it moves from 
left to right. Okay. Then we will talk about minimizing the crisscrossing. Then let us assume uh, the activity is like A depends on D. That uh, that is D depends on A. That means D activity can start when A finishes. Similarly, activity C can start when B finishes. So in a network diagram, if we put like this, probably it is not correct because crisscrossing it doesn't allow. Okay, there is a method to do it that I'll show it how to do it. But this crisscrossing we allow it. We will put a simple way as activity D it can start once A finishes. So we will we will put A D here and we will join the arrow like this. Activity C C starts when activity B finishes. We will put the activity C here D here. Then we will join it here. So this is the way we will draw it. As in earlier slide, I have shown that crisscrossing we should not do. So here to avoid criss to crisscrossing, what we will do is that we will put a loop like this. If at all it is inevitable in a network diagram, crisscrossing has to be done. There is no other way to draw the interdependencies. In that case, if there happens to be crisscrossing, instead of line, generally we will put a loop here, then we will do it. Okay. So this is the way we draw. Now, draw a network diagram by using AON, that is activity on node, or and a over there is activity and arrow, right? So this is basically a, a furnishing of construction and furnishing of a house. Let us take this is a project. Now, what are the activities involved here? What I have taken is first is the design house and obtain financing. We need to get money for that. I put a duration probably it is just for academic sake. I put a timeline here. Probably it is a three days. And the first activity is to done, so there is no predecessor. Activity B, what I have considered as a lay foundation, probably it takes two days, and it can happen once we obtain financing and the designing portion is over. Then we we'll go to activity C, which is order and receive materials, right? Probably it will take one day. I put it there. These also can happen once we have a financing. So. Activity C depends on active once activity A finishes, then only activity C can start. Then, then we will activity what I have taken as a select paint that is activity D, it will take one day so that it can happen once B and activity C are completed. That is, foundation laying is over and the order and receive materials we have received it. Okay. Then build of house. So that I have seen that this can this can we can do it when activity B and C completed, right? Then select carpet. Probably no. Once we select the paint, that is, then only we can select the carpet. So activity D that says uh, activity F can happen once the activity D is over. Then we take the activity G, that is the finish work. Probably no. It can happen once the house and the uh, uh, that is we get the house ready and we have the car carpet also. Then only the activity G can happen. So this is some of the logical sequence I have put it. Now if I want to show in you know activity on nodes or activity on arrows, how it will look like? Just see here. So this is what I call as activity is arrows. Right now, here are the activities as I said A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So, these are the activities. And what is the time required that I put it A? It takes three days for B activities, two days, C for one day, D for one day, E for three days, A for one day, G for one day. Right then, so this, this way it will move it if we took. If we can make the logical sequence, so this will move like this. So here, activity four and activity three is connected through dummy. So that's why to make a, 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 a logical networking, this dummy has put it. So if we want to depict it, sorry. So this will be the way the 
activity on arrow is been depicted. If we talk about activity on node, is if, if I took it, so these are activities A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and their activity is at the duration is mentioned T two one like that. All the duration we have mentioned. Now from activity A, if we uh, will start it from here, okay. Now we'll we'll do the activity A from activity B when do the activity A need to finish, and then. Activity C, you can do when activity A to be finished. So all logical level put it. So if we do the diagramming, it it will look like this. So this is the diagram. Generally, we will put in the network diagram. And as I told earlier also, in in uh, a, in any network diagram, generally we will uh, we will prefer M N that is activity on nodes. We will put it here. 